Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Here Comes the Boom, released in the year 2012. The movie starts and we see former Division I collegiate wrestler Scott Voss, who's a 42-year-old bored and disillusioned biology teacher at the failing Wilkinson High School. He has to teach a class, but he of course ends up oversleeping and tries to enter the class through the window because he does not want to be seen by the principal. His plan, however, does not work because the man he wants to avoid stands right there. Since he is late, the principal goes on to give him further duties as a punishment, and today he's going to be doing bus duty. He is annoyed and of course does not pay attention to his students the whole period. Later on, he tries to get some snacks from the vending machine, but it does not seem to comply. So Scott, of course, resorts to using force to get his snacks from the machine. He comes up with an idea while he snacks. He makes his way to Marty and goes on to tell him a made-up story to make him take his place on the bus duty, but Marty does not even bother to listen to him because he's too shocked to hear the news that his wife is pregnant. Betcher, the principal, goes on to inform everyone about a budget cut that has been proposed because the school has been low on funds and it cannot continue the extracurricular activities anymore. He also tells the staff that the music program is also stopped for now due to the low funds, and that means Marty will be fired from the school now. Scott, however, stands up for Marty. He goes on to tell the principal to give Marty a break because the man is about to have a child. Marty is not happy about Scott saying this in front of everyone because it is supposed to be a secret. The school principal then goes on to tell Scott that he does not have a choice because the school is going to need at least 48,000 bucks to continue the music program and right now they do not have any means to get that kind of money. Scott suggests they raise this amount. When they're at school the next day, Marty comes to Scott and tells him that he's grateful for the fact that Scott is raising the money. Scott does not want to do it and tries his best to back out, but Marty won't let him. He has no choice but to do it. They then go on to have to set up a meeting with the school teachers to raise the money, but only the nurse named Bella shows up at the meeting. While Marty tries to find the teachers to bring them to the meeting, Scott gets to have a chat with Bella. He says that it is impossible to raise that much money. She however motivates him, telling that he should not be giving up like that. She even goes on to say that she's not going to let him back up just like that because he's a good person and he can do it. He thinks that Bella is easy and tries to make a move on her right away, only to get shot down by the woman. It seems like this is not the first time Scott has made a move on her. He then goes on to ask her if she will be willing to go on a date with him if he's able to dunk the ball. She agrees as she is sure that he is never going to be able to dunk the ball. Scott goes on to use a small trampoline to jump toward the pole, but he still ends up missing the shot. When Scott goes home, he has an idea and goes to see his brother. He asks the man if they have some extra work at their place, but the man tells him that they just fired two guys as they did not need them anymore. Scott decides that he's going to make some extra money at any cost and ends up taking a class to prepare the people on how to take citizenship. He teaches this class in the evening. Scott is given a paycheck when the class is over, and a student named Nico approaches him. The man says that he needs tutoring from Scott because he's a little slow and finds it hard to keep up with the other students in the class. Scott, however, says that he does not have the time. When he goes away, Scott starts feeling guilty and decides to help Nico. When Scott tells him that he will help him, Nico is over the moon. That night, when Nico comes to his place to study, Scott goes on to learn that the man is actually a professional martial artist and he has even fought in the UFC. Scott is shocked. Later on, when the two are in a car with one of Nico's friends, Scott is shocked to learn that even the loser of the fight managed to make 10,000 bucks. Nico says that if the man had won the fight, he would have made $50,000. Scott now comes up with an idea. He goes to see Marty the next day and pitches this idea to him. The idea is to take part in a professional fight. He goes to say that he used to be a good wrestler back in his college days, adding that it would not be much of a problem for him to take a beating for that much money, implying that he's going to lose the fight. Marty does not like the idea at first, saying that he could get hurt, but our man Scott is nothing if not persuasive, and Marty ends up agreeing to the idea. When he's teaching the class that evening, the extra citizenship class, he tells them that he's going to quit and when he's out of the classroom, he this time approaches Nico and tells him that he wants to train him for the next big tournament, adding that he also wants to be a professional fighter. 
Nico is reluctant about this. And Scott then goes on to give him a deal, as he says that if Nico agrees to teach him how to fight, he can teach him well about how to get citizenship. Nico finally agrees, and goes on to tell Scott that he will train him, adding that Scott is going to have to take part in a fight that is taking place the next week. The next thing we see, Scott is talking to Marty about his fight, and he even trains with him. Marty comes up with an idea. He asks Scott how he would like to beat his opponent before the fight has even begun. Scott does not understand, and goes on to ask what on earth Marty is talking about. Marty explains, telling that he should have a very thunderous musical theme when he walks in, and this theme could very much strike fear into the hearts of his opponent. Scott says that it is not a bad idea. The weekend arrives, and Scott has his fight. He's going to be fighting at the lowest category of MMA fighters. Scott arrives at the building in good spirits, and Nico is also there. Scott is so delusional that he's positive that the music idea and his dorky outfit that is supposed to be scary to his opponent is actually going to work. He enters the ring as the music plays, and the song, Here Comes the Boom. When he enters the ring, he likes what he sees. It turns out his opponent is a fighter just like him. The man is out of shape, and it seems like he's there for the same purpose as Scott, and that purpose is to lose the fight and still take home a good amount of money. As the two get ready to fight, the crowd cheers them on. The fight begins, and Scott goes on to learn his very first lesson, and that is to never underestimate your opponent. As his opponent goes on to land a kick the moment the bell rings, and Scott is knocked out on the canvas. He is taken away on a stretcher, but he is happy because he has still managed to make $750. When he goes to school the next day, Bella goes on to tell him that he's a fool for thinking that he could stand a fight in a cage. She scolds him, telling him that it is dangerous. The man yet again thinks the woman cares for him and makes a move on her. Only to get shot down, of course. That evening, Scott goes to see Marty at his place, and he's greeted by his wife. She tells him that Marty is not home at the moment, and when he gets to chat with the man's wife, he goes on to learn that Marty has not told his wife that he's on the verge of losing his job. This just puts way more pressure on Scott to make those $48,000, because Marty has to keep his job at any cost. Scott decides to train seriously for the fights, and goes on to see Nico the very next day at his club, where the man is teaching a self-defense class. He talks about his training, and Nico tells him to train at his club, because the things he teaches at his club are the actual things he's going to face and do when he's in the cage again. That day, he goes on to teach him how he can get out of the submission moves made by his opponent, which includes chokes and other leg and arm locks, after training Scott for a while, Nico gets back to training the students at his club. Another weekend arrives, and Scott takes part yet in another fight. He goes on to take a good beating, but still manages to keep the fight going. He shows good resilience in this one, and the fight goes on until the third round. By the end of that round, however, both Scott and his opponent have gotten too tired. They cannot even swing punches properly, and the fight looks really funny, much to the annoyance of the audience, who are there to watch a good fight. Despite the fact that his opponent is almost about to fall, Scott still ends up losing the fight. The next day, when Scott is at his school, he goes on to collect tests from his students and is shocked when he sees Malia's test. Malia has been his brightest student, but today she was unable to answer three questions. He then goes on to ask her what is wrong with her, and she tells him her father has been on her tail. He wants her to quit music. She adds that her father now wants her to inherit his company and give her attention there, so she does not feel motivated to study at all. Scott's next fight is here, and while he is backstage, he hears his entrance music, only to learn that his opponent has the same music. Scott is upset about it and tells Marty to change his music because he cannot have the same music as his opponent. Marty changes his music, and Scott's entrance is a little better, but still pretty much awkward. The fight begins with the usual stuff. Scott, of course, goes on to take a beating, while Nico keeps shouting at him to stick to their game plan. His opponent then takes a moment to garner some cheers from the crowd, and that gives Scott the time to knock him out by landing a single good punch. Scott wins, but ends up throwing up right in the ring because he ate applesauce before the fight. This incident gets famous in school, but his students still respect him, and Malia also appreciates him trying to save the music program and that motivates him even further. Bella tends to his wounds, and he tries to hit on her yet again, only to get shot down for like the hundredth time. Scott, after winning his first fight, realizes that wins give larger payouts. 
needing fewer fights to achieve his goal, so he goes on to tell Nico to teach him offense too, because Nico has only been teaching him defense. He takes him to a friend who teaches offense. Nico's friend puts Scott in a ring against his boys to test him, and they go on to beat the crap out of Scott, but our man still does not give up, and the new trainer is impressed, agreeing to train him. While Scott focuses on his training, Malia helps Nico study for his citizenship test by putting the information into songs. Scott then begins fighting in small MMA fights and gradually gains greater amounts of money for the school. Betcher calls Scott to his office and tells him that he's encouraging bad behavior in students by fighting in a cage. Scott gets pissed, telling the principal that he's doing that to make the school a better place, and storms out of there after telling the principal that he too should be focusing on his duties. Scott now begins to engage the class and earns the respect of his students. Scott is within $6,000 of his goal when Mark tells him that Nico turned down a sanctioned UFC fight offered by Joe Rogan with the certainty of earning $10,000 for a loss. Scott confronts Nico, who apologizes and admits he turned it down because he was jealous as he was once asked to fight at the UFC but suffered a neck injury while training, ending his career. Scott and Nico accept the offer, and they travel to the MGM Grand Las Vegas for the fight. The night he arrives, Bella calls Scott to tell him that the school's vice principal, Robert Elkins, has been arrested for embezzling from the school, including Scott's winnings, as the man stole all the money. All Scott's efforts have been in vain, and he decides he must win the fight and the $50,000. The publicity of Scott's rise to fame has grown, and the school's band appears in the stands to play his theme song, Holly Holy, by Neil Diamond, thanks to Bella contacting Rogan. During the fight, Marty reminds the losing Scott that even if he does not win, he has inspired the students, which is their real purpose as teachers. Scott has no answer to his dangerous opponent, Ken Dietrich, who is angered that his original opponent canceled and that he's stuck with a man that does not deserve to be fighting at the UFC. Scott struggles to survive the first two rounds, but after finding inspiration from the students, in the final round he has earned the respect of his opponent for showing good resilience and the round begins. This time he dodges a few shots and even lands a nice punch. He then corners his opponent and lands a few shots. When his opponent tries to submit him by putting an arm lock on him, Scott picks his opponent up, showing insane power, and slams him to the ground, knocking him out just like that. This is how he manages to win in the third and final round of the fight, earning $50,000 and Dietrich's respect. Scott and Bella kiss through the chain link fence of the ring. In the closing scene, the music program is saved. The school is operating on a normal budget thanks to Scott's donation, and Nico and all of the students in Scott's citizenship class attend their American citizenship ceremony. And with that, the movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.